All right, let's talk about Sting. All uh, right. I I thought the uh, the whole segment that they did on Dynamite, I thought that was really good. I like, you know, Sting has an interesting connection uh, to that's a little bit different than Hogan and Flair because he came in, you know, in the later time of the 80s and, and throughout the 90s. So I, I almost don't see him like I see Hogan and Flair, but at the same time, he's been wrestling for like much longer than those guys. So it's kind of weird. Uh, but I wouldn't even consider Sting my childhood necessarily like I consider. Well, he's Hogan not my Flair. he's not my child. He's not my childhood. I was me and him are the same age and he was in his late 20s when uh, when he started. Yeah. Which is, so... of, which is one of the things like, you know, it's funny because so many people who consider Sting their childhood have these memories of him and my memories of him are going to all the shows and seeing the bad crowds you know what i mean <laughs> seeing those uh, those terrible wcw crowds and um you know and he was a star you know and all that but it wasn't like going to see hulk hogan yeah or, or even or even when rick flair was hot you know what i mean and and seeing those crowds i mean obviously later with rick flair was it was the same thing and they were often on the same cards but um but rick flair had those you know that period in the you know, seventies and, and, um, most of the eighties where I would go to the shows and, and it was, they were very, very successful. Um, but, um, you know, it's, you know, he, he I, I mean, I give him all the credit in the world. I remember I saw sting, um, this is a couple years back. I mean, it was, it was actually many years back because it was, it was a 2k thing. Um, and so we, he and I were talking and his son was still in, in college playing football. So nice talking, uh, Bryce Young shout out in the Observer. Bryce Yang, sorry. Bryce Yang, Bryce, Bryce Yang. Yang, who got Sting, Ultimate Warrior, and Bill Goldberg all into WWE, and never, you know, nobody knows. I mean, people. I think some people know the stories, but most people don't know the stories. But none of the three, um, and especially Warrior and Goldberg, there's zero point zero percent chance that those guys would have ever been in WWE again without Bryce. Sting, I mean, I could say there's probably you know, 3% chance that could happen, but it wasn't a high percentage, but Bryce got him in. And I mean, the whole deal in, in, in the case of Sting was, you know, Sting wasn't in, Sting was just going to be the video game character. And that was fine. You know, they were, everyone was cool with that. Unlike with Warrior and Goldberg, where, you know, um, they weren't quite as cool <laughs> um, with that, but, 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 you know, they got their way, you know, they got their way with Sting. It was like, yeah, you know, cool. And they put the, the, um, the commercial on raw well they put it on all the shows the, the the video game commercial on of sting and all of a sudden everybody oh, sting and ultimate warrior wrestlemania blah 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 and people are just going nuts over it and it's like i knew it's like he's not even with a company but it got so much that the company was like hey let's bring him in of course they didn't do the warrior the um um they didn't sting they didn't do the sing undertaker match um but they did bring him in and you know, in hindsight, of course, Sting in WWE. Sting in WWE is probably a large part of the reason, other than money, that Sting ended up with his three-year run in AEW mm -hmm. because... He was unsatisfied at the he end. He was unsatisfied with his exit and should have been. You know, it was kind of like... And then after, you know, the broken neck, the career is over, not medically cleared, for him to come back... I mean, for him to come back and do the cinematic match, yeah, that's cool. But he went and did, like real matches which at the beginning we didn't even think he would do that and then he went completely out of his mind doing these jumps off of balconies and crazy things trying to you know compete with darby allen i mean not compete but whatever with darby Allen. by the way poor darby allen man that guy's insane but he's he uh, did you see that did you see that stuff i saw something about a face tattoo no he got a, he broke his shoulder oh he did yeah doing some um God, what was it like? Um, you know, X Games like shit, you know, or oh, skateboard man. shit. Yeah, not wrestling stuff. So, so, um, yeah, yeah, like, like yesterday, I think. So, all the crazy stuff that he does in the ring, and it's an outside of the ring thing to where he really, really gets hurt. Yeah, yeah. Yikes. Uh, so, um, your story in the Observer about, you know, kind of what to do, but also there's a history piece and, the, the fascinating thing to me about Sting, and it's just probably the time period because I'm a teenager at this point, but 1990, at almost the exact same time, WWF and NWA decide that they are going to change their historic champions to the younger 
Yes. A uh, younger person, like a, like a, a new Hogan generation kind of. Hogan the Warrior, Flair to Sting. Yeah, they both make the decision at the same time. And, you know, I mean, Sting had a great long career. But, I mean, when he won that title, I mean, it was supposed to be a long championship run. And Warrior, too. And Warrior didn't last a year, and Sting lasted even less um, because it wasn't what they expected. And there's, you know, WCW was going down anyway. I mean, I was living that. And, I mean, I I knew one of the, the curse of both of them, of both Warrior and Sting, was replacing such iconic characters. And, you know, it was like, you had a, a generation of people when they came in and it's just kind of, okay, go out there and, you know, warrior, sh show us you're better than Hogan. And it's kind of <laughs> like, well, you're not. <laughs> Sting, go and give us those Ric Flair matches. Well, they can't, you know, and it was, it was very difficult for both of them, you know, and, um, and that's what happened. You know, I mean, it was like, Sting couldn't promo like Flair. Sting couldn't wrestle like Flair. But he was young and he was charismatic and he was the best they had. And at some point, you know, you you have to. But, but WCW was always in panic mode. So if you go in there at some point, you know, um, I guess that people will stop resenting. But, you know, I mean, Sting never, you know, Sting was put in a bad position timing wise because Ric Flair was such a complete performer. And him following Ric Flair was very, very difficult. And then, you know, afterwards, then in 94, Hogan comes and, and you know, I mean, at that point, he's never going to be number one because Hogan's always going to be number one. Um, I don't know if Sting, you know, if Sting was better as, as number two um, than number one anyway. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to say because he, you know, he, in, in some ways, number two is number two is a, a good position to be in because you get while well, you don't get the credit. When things are bad, you don't get the blame. Whereas number one, yeah, you will get the credit when things are too, are good, but you're going to get a lot of blame when things are bad. So, and then Sting later, you know, I mean, then, you know, you had, um, you know, you had um, in the later WCW years, you know, you had other people as well that, that were, I mean, it was a loaded cast and then it still went down. Um, but um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a fascinating career to me only because it's like, you know, he was the guy in, 1989 right so 1989 this guy's 30 years old and him and luger and all them the steiners well, the steiners came um scotty's came later but but rick was already there um and they're sitting there going like god these 40 year olds you know won't they give it up you know what i mean i mean can't they what are they what are they trying to prove you know what i mean and it should be our time and it became their time and, mm -hmm. and you know things happened and here's I mean, if you told that guy you're going to be wrestling until a month before your 65th birthday, you know, he's going to go, there's no freaking way. Yeah. But, but that's what happened. Okay. So the, the fascinating thing to me is they put the belt on Sting with the idea that they're not going to have to ever go back to Flair. Oh, I could tell you that, that, um, it would be December of 89, um, when, you know, uh, it was right after I'm going to, I'm going to say it's right after Starcade, you know, where sting wins and flair puts him over and, you know, and then they're going to build to the the match in Greensboro where, where sting's going to win the title. And I remember people in that company going and, and they were blaming flair for the business. They were, which was in hindsight, you know, um, probably not fair, but as I said, when you're number one, you're going to get the blame. If the business was great, he would have gotten the credit. Um, and it's just like, you know, thank God we're going to get rid of Ric Flair as the world champion. We can finally grow this company. And, you know, Sting's going to be our guy and and wait until we get that belt on Sting. And I think Flair was um, it was six-time champion, I think it was. And I think the record was seven. With, it was Harley's record or maybe eight, whatever it was. Rick had not broken that record, okay, the, the Harley record yet. And I remember them going like, Rick has never broken Harley's record. There will be no whatever that number was, I think it was seven. I just keep remembering, there will be no number seven. And, you know, a year later, there was a number seven, eight, nine, ten. You know what I mean? Not only that, but the the because the creative was so weird, Flair is wrestling this guy at Starcade as the Black Scorpion, even before he regains the title as Ric Flair. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine that just thinking about how 
you know, how, how wrestling works that nope, Rick's never gonna like never's a long time. Like, why would you make that declaration at that moment? I've every never, you know, you know what I mean? Every time I hear never, you know what I mean? That's why I kept thinking WWE's gonna probably bring in punk, but maybe they won't. Because every time I hear that, oh Steve, I remember when 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 they buried Austin. I mean, yeah. and I talked to many, many people in that company, I go, what the fuck are you doing this guy's the biggest draw that you have he's never coming back and it's like you know he's coming back no vince said he is never coming back and i go you know he's coming back this is wrestling you know he's coming back and you freaking damaged you damaged a guy who drew you more money than anyone but but hogan you damaged this guy for no reason you know what i mean because you're you're you know when when Dwayne did the you know took his ball and go home and go what the and jr does the john wayne thing i'm going what the fuck are you guys doing you, you, you know, are you that petty? You know, he, you had a disagreement. Freaking everybody, every star has disagreements. You know what I mean? He'll be back. That's wrestling. You know, and Austin didn't think he'd be back either, but you know, that's different. You know, he, and JR negotiated the, 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 the thing a year later and they all came back and, you know, but, um, yeah, yeah. You know, the, um, you know, I, I always think when people say never, you know, my, my reaction always is, you know, um, I've been told, many many nevers in this business mm -hmm. and um there's very very few that ended up being true you know i mean very you know bruno went bruno went to the wb hall of fame you know what i mean and that was one i never expected to happen you know um so there you go hayes versus dragonoff yeah this is gonna be very very short dragonoff ha has his hair hanging over his eyes that's what he got out of this match <laughs> I gave that a 12 on the granny scale. Why? His hair was in his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about we get you a, a pen recorder for your birthday? Brian, I got one. Just nobody knows how to hook it up. So you don't have one. You have one that needs to be hooked up. It works as a pen, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll help you hook that up. <laughs> That's the biggest joke I ever heard. <laughs> you are the worst grandmother. Oh my God. <laughs> God. She just cackled at you. Is she drinking that? <laughs> no, she's putting her teeth in or something. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.